As a father of two, I'm terrified that the next generation of kids in this country might actually have shorter lifespans than their parents do because of the epidemic of obesity. My view is that a lot of work has been done trying to make us less hungry, but actually a bigger problem is our inability to avoid foods in the first place, especially yummy foods. And so uh, when you already have a piece of cake in front of somebody, it's too late. I started my lab here uh, a year ago to understand how attention to food cues makes us uh, more driven to eat too much and how we might be able to prevent that by um, understanding the brain circuits involved. The way I'd like to think about hunger and attention is that um, you pay attention to the things that you want to get, that your body is telling you that you need. And so if I'm driving in a car, what I really should be paying attention to are the cars in front of me. But once my stomach starts grumbling, I start paying attention to the roadside food signs. And eventually those signs are the things that drive you to ultimately consume, to find the food and to eat it. In principle, get a better shot, right? I'm currently trying to visualize the activity of neurons in the brain, in particular in the cortex, the cognitive aspects of the brain, and see how those neurons are processing um, visual stimuli that are associated with food. Yeah. So what we are doing is trying to sort of enter that inner universe using some tricks from quantum physics that others have developed to allow us to do something called two-photon imaging. And what two-photon imaging allows you to do is instead of seeing mush on the surface of a brain, it allows you to actually see visual pictures of large numbers of brain cells or neurons flashing and the more they flash, the more these cells are active and the more they're relaying information about the food pictures to downstream regions that are ultimately going to control approach to food and eating. Advances that we've made in the last five years is to be able to do these experiments in a mouse that's awake and has its head fixed so that the microscope can actually see its brain and we can spy on hundreds of neurons and their activity across days. And we can find the same neurons day after day and see whether or not their activity is changing. And that's our clue to understanding whether or not the animal is changing their attention. And that's also our clue for understanding how we might be able to change that attention with drugs. I think one of the things that this research will allow us to do is to really make it clear that there are brain circuits that are faulty, that are going awry, that can be redirected uh, when we try to understand the addiction to food. And I think it'll also give us strategies for trying to actually find those therapies, I wouldn't call them cures, that are going to help people help themselves get better.